Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is Companions on the Journey. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love we there is a hope we share. For we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God our Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, I welcome you to this Holy Mass of Sunday, the 20th week. And wherever you are joining us from, I want you to recognize and to realize that this Mass is going to be offered for you. I pray for you and I pray for the intentions that you bringing to God and that you carry in your heart this morning whether that be of petition of praise or of thanksgiving I offer all those from this altar to God's altar in heaven so I pray for those who have asked special intentions or who have sent special intentions I offer those asking our Blessed Mother's help with her prayers I also pray for those who are sick especially those who our family members that are battling and struggling for their lives. May God who answered and responded to this lady today do the same for you and for your loved ones. Pray for young children, pray especially for children who have physical or mental disabilities. Pray that they who are more exposed to this virus be kept safe by God, be children and be protected and that God may ease the anxieties of their parents who care for them. Also, want to pray for parents, especially those who have to deal with sick children, that God may be with them at this time. Pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries. Pray for our soldiers. Pray for members of other departments of our military. Pray for our police, our fire department. Pray for public service workers, especially those who constantly wakes every day. May God protect them and bless them for their service. I invite you to bring your intentions and let us pray together. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will honor the Holy One, you will honor the Lord, you will honor the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right. 
do what is just for my salvation is about to come my justice about to be revealed the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord ministering to him loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant then I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable to my altar for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples the word of the Lord thanks be to God O God let all the nations praise you O God let all the nations praise you may God have pity on us and bless us may he let his face shine upon us so may your way be known upon earth among all nations your salvation O God let all the nations praise you may the nations be glad and exult because you rule the peoples in equity and the nations on the earth you guide O God let all the nations praise you may the peoples praise you O God may all the peoples praise you may God bless us and may all the ends of the earth fear him O God let the nations praise you. A second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection for if their rejection is a reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gift and the call of God is irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed, disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might, he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus proclaimed the gospel to the, of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Siren, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, 
great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, um, I, I don't know where you are at this time. I'm not talking about your physical location. I'm talking about your spiritual well-being and your emotional equilibrium. Maybe there is a tilt in your spiritual or emotional equilibrium and you're finding yourself maybe um, positioned upside down, positioned in some way upwardly. And you're looking for, for some, some balance. Maybe you are like this woman whose child has been sick, maybe born with some condition, or whose grandchild, or whose nephew, or whose niece, or someone that you know who has been struggling or suffering like this. And I know that there are over a billion people around the world born with conditions that they didn't choose. And they have to battle with and their family and loved ones have to do the same every day. I hope that just as God responded to this woman, that you may find comfort, grace and strength in your own struggle and in your battle. But I'd like for us to reflect today from this gospel reading and see what lessons and what principles the Lord Jesus is laying out for us in our relationship with him. You know, um, there is a woman here in this gospel and she has an identified need which is that her child is sick and she needs some remedy for her sickness. She doesn't want to lose her. We were not told on the father of this child. So maybe the father is not there. Maybe this is a single mother. And so she's taking the reins by herself. So it makes me think about all single parents who also have to double up as dad and mom and everything. So she has a need and she comes to Jesus. She is not a Jew. She is a Canaanite woman. That means someone who um, is considered a Gentile, not someone born of promise, but technically someone outside the promise. So she comes to Jesus. And you remember the other woman who said Canaanites and Jews don't, or Samaritans and Jews don't talk. The same thing was with Canaanite people because they were considered people who were mixed up, adulterated, dirty, dogs, animals, whatever. So she comes to Jesus today. And she says, please help me, son of David. And you realize the Lord Jesus did not say a word to her. Now, I want to just stop there first and, and talk about asking. Now, asking naturally you know, normally it's a very uncomfortable thing it doesn't matter what it is that you're asking think about when you wanted to ask your boss for something or when you wanted to ask even your spouse for something or your parent for something normally you have to spend some time looking for the best moment calculating put, getting the right words you go through all of that rehearsal and that practice that if it doesn't matter how good a job you do, you still carry some fear, some anxiety, and some tension within you before you make and project or express that this that that request. So asking is hard. It makes us uncomfortable because it's, it also makes us vulnerable to the person we're asking. It makes us we feel like we are dependent on someone, and that's not something that is comfortable. We fear the reaction of the other person. Will they say yes? Will they insult me? Will they reject me? Will I live here feeling the same or feeling worse off because of how they treat me? 
And so sometimes we go, we juggle all of those thoughts in our minds. And in most cases, we just resist to ask. We prefer to write the storm. We prefer to die in silence. We prefer not to put ourselves or make ourselves vulnerable. Not this woman. She has a need. And she comes for it. And she wants it. And she wants it badly. So sometimes you realize our arrogance and our pride can be on the way. So I want us to learn something very, very strong from this lady. When she comes with her need, she puts it out there before Jesus. And she puts it out boldly, intentionally. And not one who will just take a no for an, for an answer. So when Jesus doesn't respond, she keeps asking, she keeps crying, she keeps, she keeps calling. You remember, when you read 2 Timothy, you read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible tells us that God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear, but he gave us a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. And that's what I see from this woman. Too many of us have this, um, this attitude of timidity. We fear to ask. We feel uncomfortable asking. We feel terrified asking. It makes us, it, it sends all kinds of wrong signals in our heads. And, and that means even asking God. So when we go into God, we go into God with an expectation of rejection, with an expectation of failure, with an expectation of silence or no answer at all, with an expectation of doubt. But then when this woman came to Jesus, she came with an expectation to get an answer for what she wanted. And that's something that stands out in this text. And Jesus says to her, commends her. So, you have received from God a spirit not of timidity, but one that allows you to call God Daddy, to call God Father. That means it bridges the gap between a stranger and a benefactor that you don't know. God is not just a benefactor. He is daddy. He is father. And so that's why he gave us that spirit that bridges that gap and allows us to powerfully and allows us to lovingly and allows us to self-disciplinely come before him and make our request. So you realize that this woman will not be stopped. She will not be timid. She will be intentional, she will be bold, and she will be unstoppable. So when Jesus doesn't answer her, you realize, I, I, I want to just say something about that. What do you think, and why do you think that Jesus did not respond? Because for some of us, when someone doesn't respond, we feel like we're bothering them. Then that makes us even feel worse. We feel bad that their action looks like we are a burden to them. There's some burdensomeness from us to them. You realize there's something else that goes out here. Jesus, God, did not say, did not even complain about the noise that this woman was making. But someone complained, the apostles did. And that sometimes reminds me about how we are more like the apostles. We feel bothered. We feel disturbed when people are asking us for things we know we can offer. We feel that being an unnecessary burden. Now, God is not like that. The apostles, you could see, are like that. So they came to Jesus and says, please send her away. She's been calling out on us. She's been distracting and disturbing us. Jesus doesn't send her away. If you pay attention, does not send her away. Why is that? I know I've heard people who have said, man, Jesus was very degrading here and just very um, um, very dismissive here when he ignored this woman and even said the things he said to her. I, I believe the Lord Jesus said all of those things to try to test the faith of this woman just so he can use her faith 
to teach us how to relate to him, how to interact with him, and how to come towards him. Don't forget, Jesus had already said, he told us himself, when you read John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 13, he says, ask the Father anything in my name, and he will give it to you. So Jesus wasn't here talking about or trying to dismiss or ignore this woman or even disrespect her. But he wanted to bring, wanted to put her to the test and bring out something so vital that he would use as a lesson for you and a lesson for me. And see how this gospel ends. When Jesus said to her, it is not right to give children's food to dogs. She's not angry. She's not upset. I'll come back to that point. She's not angry. She's not upset. See what she says. She says, but God, even dogs do share from the scraps that fall around the master's table. And Jesus says, now you won. Now you got the exams right. Now you passed with an A because that's exactly what I was wanting to bring from you, to see from you, that you are coming to me, not as an ATM, just to make a withdrawal, that you are coming to me with faith and confidence for relationship, because ultimately, God wants a relationship with us, not one where we treat him like an ATM, where we only go to when we need money, when we need something, but a relationship that is stable, from which flows everything else that we need. That's what this lady did. Jesus said, woman, you have outstanding and great faith. Whatever you have asked, let that be done to you. And so Jesus uses this woman as an example for how you and I must behave when we go to God in prayer. We must come boldly. We must come intentionally. We must come ready to get what we need because the Father has promised that. Now, I want us to also focus and see what is happening here with this lady. Now, generally, hurting people, people who are hurting, whether it's because something is going on in your life that is not okay, hurting people are super sensitive, are hypersensitive to insults or to perceptions of insults, and they take those very personally because they feel doubly traumatized, doubly hurt that you responded the way you did. Now, that, unfortunately, is not the way to win. You don't win when you are hurting, when you need help and need support. That is when you must be calm, collected, and purposeful. Don't allow anything to distract you. Focus on what you are looking for. Focus on what you seek. And don't allow side comments to distract you. Sometimes they are just meant to test how much you want and how much you need and deserve what you're asking for. And this woman passed that exams too. She does not become irritable, does, does not react angrily or bashfully, does not lash out at Jesus because he insinuated that she was a dog. She knows what she wanted. She wanted the healing of her daughter and she was insistent on making sure she gets there. So when Jesus says that, she uses that in a very comical but also a um, wise way and puts that back right at Jesus master but even dogs do eat scraps that fall from the master's table I, I, I could see her saying that with a smile on her face with a sense of calmness and recollectedness knowing she has come to the source of everything and she wasn't leaving that place without what she came for so I encourage you, whether it's asking God or asking anyone else, don't let the side comments be a distraction. You know what you want and you stick to what you came for and focus on that until you get what you need. So I, I hope, dear friends, that as we, we listen to this text and see what the Lord is offering us, that we will learn the lesson that this lady you know, uh, projects for us here. First, that God is able. Second, that God cares. Third, that he will do what he says he will do. But the rest remains for us. 
we learn from this lady. That when you come to God, come to God with an expectant faith. A faith that is unstoppable. A faith that doesn't, doesn't get distracted. A faith that is intentional. A faith that knows how to get what it needs. Secondly, don't let your hurt make you overly sensitive, overly reactive. And don't stay timid because of a sense, a vulner a sense of vulnerability you feel about asking. If you don't ask, you don't get. And if you don't ask boldly, you never get immediate response. This lady depicts all of that for us. God is never silent. He doesn't feel bothered. He is there for us. You and I may feel bothered, angry, or um, betot, but God is almost always open to listen and to give us what it is that we need. As always, dear friends, I hope you will be the next lesson that God would use to communicate lessons, principles of his operation with humanity to others based on your faith and your approach to God. If you forget everything I said, don't forget this, that you remain the delight of God Almighty. God loves you very much. Let us pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was seen kind of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ tore down the barriers separating Jews and Gentiles as one people of one new and eternal covenant. Let us imitate him. Let us pray to God to help us bridge the differences between peoples. Help us build bridges and not walls. And help us openly respond to others others request and needs even as God responds to us. For the universal church and the mission of our church for the salvation of all peoples that our Holy Father, the Pope, our bishops and our priests and all leaders of other denominations and world religions may seek the healing and the reconciliation of the human world we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For societies caught in racial or class tensions that discriminate against others on grounds of racial diversity, religious differences, and other ethnic considerations, that we believers may help foster understanding that we may work together to build a more hospitable and accepting world let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayers for artists for musicians for scholars and authors who preserve the heritage of ethnic cultures that God may provide inspiration 
as they continually build bridges across peoples and nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who have migrated from other nations into our community, especially those who feel unseen, unheard, unknown. We pray for children, but especially for children with physical or mental disabilities. We pray for their parents that they may feel the love, care, and protection of Almighty God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have entered the dimensions of eternal life, especially all those who have died from this virus, and people who have died from other causes during this time, but especially for those who are unable to be there with their loved ones at a moment like this to say goodbye, that God who knows your grief and feels your pain may help you find comfort and closure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your own needs and for your families. Pray for the needs of all those who have asked our prayers. Pray for those we have offered to pray for during this Mass. People with birthdays or anniversaries. That our good God may bless you and grant you the graces you need at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Loving Father, you created us out of one stock in your image and likeness. Receive the prayers we offer in this house of praise and worship. Open for all of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made it become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of a virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion the Lord Jesus took bread and giving thanks he broke it gave it to the disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended the Lord took a chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to the disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of a new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me with the first acclamation let us proclaim the mystery of our faith we proclaim your death o lord and profess your resurrection until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, with Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Now let us ask grace for spiritual communion. Most gracious God, today you reveal to us that your treasures of mercies are inexhaustible. And the ocean of your mercy flows eternally. We ask Almighty God that from that same source, your children who are unable to attend Mass and receive it physically may draw spiritual grace and strength and blessing and favors for every need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. Make, part make partakers of Christ through the sacraments. We humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co heirs in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snows of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the rings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us. I pray that God may be with you. I pray that God will answer this lady today may answer you. And I pray that you may leave this day, finish this day, feeling better about life, about yourself, and about your relationship with God. As always, I like to end everything I say and do by reminding you, you are still the delight of God Almighty. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, for the closing hymn, I'd like for us to sing the summons. Will you come and follow me if I echo you?